short for deoxyribonucleic acid, makes up chromosomes and is found in the nu nucleus of a cell. It contains codes for making proteins. Okay, so it's important to know that it's called deoxyribonucleic acid. We're going to talk about the components. Here's a little image. Uh, here's the cell. The chromosomes are located in the nucleus. We talked about this earlier in the semester. And the, as you can see, we're going from small to big if you look at the bottom. The DNA makes up genes. Genes make up chromatin, and then those make up chromosomes. They're all wrapped and twisted together. Okay? So these, these are, are very important to our cellular function. Okay, um, DNA composition. Uh, the, com the components of DNA are rather complex, um, but today we're only going to discuss the basics of DNA because um, we're going to be doing a lab and uh, we're going to be able to see DNA today. Um, the composition of DNA is basically, um, it has a, a double helix structure, and the double helix structure is made up of a phosphate background, backbone. And then there's nucleotides that connect the two phosphate background, backbones together with hydrogen bonds. And then um, ATCG are just uh, simplifications of adenine, guanine, cetazine, and thymine. And um, sometimes you see a U in there. Um, can somebody tell me what the U is? Anybody? Jen? Uracil, yes. And the um, thing about uracil is it can only be seen in uh, RNA. So you're not going to see uracil in DNA. And then uh, the sugar is on the phosphate backbone, and it's deoxyribose. And that's where the DNA gets its name, deoxyribonucleic acid, because it's a combination of all three. And then if you note that A, adenine and thymine go together, and guanine and cytosine go together. And that's pretty much every time, unless there's a mutation, and then you'll get a alternate um, protein. All right, and then um, Watson and Crick are known as the founders of the DNA um, double helix structure. There was kind of debate on Watson and Crick if they were the first ones, but mm -hmm. that's what most biology textbook recognize as Watson and Crick. Um, and then the nucleotides, adenine, guanine, cytosine, and thymine are connected to the sugar deoxyribose. Um, and then the sugar is connected to the phosphate background. And again, adenine to thymine, guanine to cytosine, that's very important because that's how they match up the phosphate backbone. And then there's, they're called complementary stands that make up the double helix. So if you have C, G, G, T, T on one side, on its second complementary stand, you're going to have G, C, C, A, A on the other side to match up. Okay, can I have a volunteer to try to attempt to uh, film the complementary strand here in the base pairs? Learning what we just said? Okay, you can come on up. So this is one of the of the complementary strands, and she's gonna fill in the other side. You want me to fill it in down yep. here? Okay. Good. A to T, C to G. That's the important thing, okay? And these are hydrogen bonds right here that are holding these uh, nu nucleotides together. Okay. All right, now I'm going to just go over the basics of replication, transcription, and translation. So it's important to know that replication is basically unzipping the DNA structure. And when we do that, we're able to re replicate exact copies of the helix. So we'll have two double helixes after this. A double strand of DNA unwinds, and the strands separate. So this would be done possibly by a protein to cut it in half. It, uh, we're having a little trouble loading it, but as you can see, it's cutting the strand, and then there's going to be matching nucleotides. For each unwound strand, the bases can now match with those that are floating free in the cell. The familiar base pairing rules apply. A pairs with T, G with C, and so. Okay. Yep, and in the end, they're going to have two double helixes that are the same as that. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna give you a basis of transcription. It's basically when you take DNA, you copy it, and you, you copy it onto something called an RNA molecule. Now this will have the sequence uh, of the matching DNA, okay? So it's gonna take this RNA molecule that I read from DNA, and it's, then it's gonna be translated into proteins. So this is where Rebecca, Rebecca was talking about how it takes that sequence, and then it forms the proteins that we need. So on this slide, I'll explain the difference between DNA and RNA. DNA is basically, it holds the hereditary genetic information like we've seen, the base pairs. These sequences are important to create proteins. 
then RNA is a molecule that comes and it transcribes <coughs> the information from that DNA code, and then the RNA is going to be read by something else to create What is a chromosome? Each cell in our body contains a lot of DNA. In fact, if you pulled the DNA from a single human cell and stretched it out, it would be three meters long. That's about as long as a car. How does all of that DNA fit into a cell? The DNA is packaged into compact units called chromosomes. So DNA makes up The packaging of DNA into a chromosome is done in several steps, starting with the double helix of DNA. Then the DNA is wrapped around some proteins. These are called histone proteins, so if you want to write that down, histone proteins. These proteins are packed tightly together until they form a chromosome. Chromosomes are efficient storage units for DNA. Okay, so this is very similar to taking a string and twisting it a bunch of times. Because watch what happens. I took in, I took in this shoelace, and now, because I've twisted it so much, it's going to kind of condense and wrap around itself. See? That happens to foam cords when you have the old foam cord. Yep. So, so this is how it kind of condenses. All that twisting around the histone proteins and around each other is, is how this works. And Mitch is just going to show an image. It's, it's like the image before, how we started with the DNA and the gene, and then it wraps around those histone proteins and it forms a chromosome. And again, they're located in the nucleus. And here's just a side scale. These are uh, two nanometers in width. That's what DNA is. And, and chromosomes are only 700 nanometers. That's 10 to the negative ninth. That's very small, 10 to the negative ninth meters. Okay, so uh, now what we're going to do is, now that we got a little bit of background information, uh, we're going to move into the lab. And first thing we're going to do is, we're, uh, I'm going to tell you that this is a DNA extraction today. The labs are actually over here, and you'll, you'll take a look at it in a second. But what I want everybody to, to understand is that today we're going to be working with strawberries and other materials, and there's no eating of the stra strawberries or anything like that. I'm make that clear. If you do something like that, you're going to lose points on the lab because we do a lab check today. So make sure you're paying attention. And it's going to be a fun time, but just want to make sure everybody's uh, doing what's appropriate. With a partner, you will be extracting DNA using simple household items. Remember, DNA makes up chromosomes. These chromosomes are found in the nucleus of the cell. Using different chemicals, we will be able to break apart the cell and synthesize only the DNA. The goal is for you to learn and remember the composition, structure, and function of DNA. It is also important for you to understand that DNA is retrieved by scientists using similar methods. Understand that DNA is extremely small and only when we bring it together we can see it with the naked eye. Understand that DNA is found in living and once living organisms. Here, I'm going to take one of these, one of each, put the, put the test tube in here as a holder, and then then grab one strawberry, okay? The other part here, uh, while, Ke while Kevin's doing that, I'm going to come and I'm going to take my buffer solution and then I'm going to measure out uh, 10 mils or a little bit higher, 10 to 12 mils into a graduated cylinder and then bring it back to the lab table. So we got one partner getting the stuff over here and then one partner getting the, um, uh, Even the strawberry on the, on the paper plate. That's the yeah. whole purpose of this. So cut the grains off. Okay. And then um, once that green part is cut off, um, we're going to have you put it in the plastic bag and make sure you get all the air out because um, it's easier to smash with all the air out. Okay? And then once you get it in there and get all the air out, we're going to ask you to mash it for about three minutes. Okay. Using your fingers. At this moment, the other group member, the group member with the glove should be do doing the mashing. The other group member, open up your lab, turn to question number five, and someone take a guess why we're mashing the fruit in the bag. <laughs> so, uh, Jenny said because it feels cool. So that's one reason. Um, is there a scientific standpoint that we could be doing this for? To break down the cells. Yep. And there's a specific structure in the cell that we really want to break down. Um, it's, to give you a hint, it's only in uh, plant cells. Oh. Uh, yeah, cell walls. That, uh, because that's the structure and rigidity of the cell. So we want to break that cell wall down so we can get all the contents and the cytoplasm out. So we're doing this for three minutes, and uh, the, other, the other group member, 
can start on question one and maybe maybe try to answer that. So now, uh, next class, we're going to take the buffer <laughs> that we had. So the person that uh, has been filling out the answers can take the buffer solution. And we're going to ask the person that's been mashing the partner to open up the bag. Very careful. Don't want to get uh, strawberry juice all over your phone. Okay, and we're, then we're going to ask you to pour the buffer solution into the bag. And once the buffer solution is in the bag, we'll ask you to seal it back up tight again, get all the air out, um, so we don't pop the bag. And then we're going to go ahead and mash that again for another. The next step is we're going to take the coffee filter and we're going to take our test tube out of there, right? And this is going to be a two-part, two-person process. You're going to need all four hands. So for the next roughly ten minutes, we'll probably not go that long. I'm going to take this and just barely squeeze it and, and, and release uh, release some of this mixture into the bottom. It's very important that we don't squeeze too hard because if that filter breaks, you're going to get all the stuff that you don't want in there. Mitch is going to help uh, everybody obtain 10 milliliters of ethanol. And actually, I think we're going to up it up. Uh, up to about 15, yeah, somewhere, somewhere between 10 and Make sure you bring your graduate. If you want to pour it into the solution that we have the strawberry, right? just go ahead and pour it in that mixture. And then um, if you watch closely, you'll be able to see um, a layer of on top. Yep. Right? And you can see DNA start to precipitate. It kind of looks a little uh, whitish on there. Okay. So, so the next step is set, set your beaker flat. Move, yeah, move, don't shake it. Guys. I'm going to go around and give a few, few groups more of alcohol. Okay. Yeah. Um, or I should say it's propyl yeah. alcohol. And now the next step is each, we got, we got two of these so that each group member can do this. But what you're going to do is you're going to take the cotton swab. And you're going you're gonna to go to, there's going to be a slight interface. It's You have two layers of the mixture. The, the ethanol, or the isopropyl alcohol, is less dense, so it floats on top of the extraction mixture below. So you're gonna go to that interface where it looks like there's a difference in the color of the solutions, and you're gonna spin it like this, okay? And when you do that, you lift up, and you'll get a clear, uh, gooey type mixture, and that's the DNA. I see it, I see it. Yeah, like a booger. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna show this dude. So you got a lot, a lot of DNA. Oh, yeah. Okay. yeah. Oh, actually, I'm going to go that deep. good. So we got it. What do we do with it once we get it? Just kind of play with it. it. <laughs> Just play with There's it. There's nothing we can do with yeah. our yeah, with the amount of technology. So is this how we do in a criminology lab? No, uh, that's gel electrophoresis. If you going to do uh, <coughs> uh, uh, fingerprinting for that, that can you see that? Mm -hmm. It doesn't look like a big snack wow. either. Mm. <laughs> what is DNA? Deoxyribonucleic acid. And why is it important to humans or any living thing? Oh, my. <laughs> yeah, it controls reproduction and all cell functions by manufacturing protein regulators. Control cell production and yeah. you say all cell functions be by by producing protein regulators. Sort of like Big Brother, the federal government, and all the cabinet positions. Hey, we hope you're learning a lot about DNA and we're able to see it. If you guys are um, do have your uh, lab packets done, you can hand it in.